Next up, we have our flying geese. Now, this is a great way to make flying geese because you make um, you make many at a time. How many do you make at a time? Four, maybe? I don't even remember. Eight? <laughs> this is why you look at the pattern. Um, okay, I'm going to lay a couple of my background squares on top of this large color one square. Because this is so big, I'm not going to try to eyeball it. I am going to make myself a guideline. There are multiple ways to give yourself a guideline. You can create a crease with your iron or even finger press a crease. You could use uh, tape, some kind of guideline on your sewing machine. You know, there's there's no wrong way. Just a way to, to give you a cue, right? That this is where you sew. So because, you know, like I said, these are larger pieces of fabric. Um, I don't want anything to shift or move. I just want them to stay right where they are. So that's why I'm gonna stick four pins in this. I'm gonna stick one on either side of my guideline because I'm going to sew a quarter inch seam on both sides of this guideline, not down the middle. That's where I'm gonna cut in the future. I'm gonna sew quarter inch seam on both sides. All right, now I guess I'll just snap. I'm not very good at snapping. I'll just snap and then the next seam, it will be done. <laughs> now I have my seam sewn and you can see this looks a little bit ripply, but that's okay. Fabric just kind of moves. I'm gonna slice it. You can actually, you could use your scissors because um, you have a guideline. You don't even have to use your rotary cutter, but anytime you can use your rotary cutter and ruler, it is gonna go faster. Um, okay, I'm gonna give myself a little slice. Voila. And now I'm gonna take this over to my ironing board and I'm going to press these open, just like so, or to the side. You can press them open, but I, I like to press to the side. Now I have two of these identical units. So they look nice. They kind of look like hearts. Aww. Okay, I'm gonna get grab another one of my background squares and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I can, at this point, draw a guideline, but I actually have some nifty tape set up uh, at my sewing machine. So I don't even need to do a guideline. I mostly did it before because I was working with such a large area. The tape at my uh, sewing machine wasn't gonna work, but this is small enough because I'm just sewing from here to here. Well, you know, I'm sewing either side. You know, this is a video. Come on, Seuss, let's just show. Let's show and not tell. Isn't that what they say in drama class? I don't know, maybe they said that. I was, I was never very good. Uh, I, was, I was only the, um, the, what do you call it, the backup, the B squad. Yeah, one time. Okay, so I'm gonna sew on either side of this guide mark. There we go. Understudy, there it is. Hey brain, I'm glad you showed up. Uh, here and here's one more. I already have that line drawn. Yay, go me. And now I'm gonna do my pins. Again, if you're like super confident in your sewing skills and you don't like to sew with pins or you don't need pins, that's fine too. I just like pins because I do a better job when I pin. All right, off I go. All right, here I go one more time. I'm gonna slice in between those two seams. One, two. And then I'm gonna take this over to my sewing machine or to my ironing board and I'm gonna press it open. So boop, boop. Oh, you can see we got four. Okay, not eight. <laughs> press that open. I'm gonna have a really pretty flying goose. I guess this is just a single goose. Um, I'm going to also show you how to trim these because they need to be trimmed down for the shining star pattern. That is actually a little bit trickier than making the goose itself, but um, with this video, you'll have no trouble at all. No trouble at all. So I'm back with my four geese and I have these little tails. You can call them dog ears or whatnot. Those definitely need to go, but I also need to trim this block down to five and a half by ten and a half so it fits nicely with everything else now when I'm doing this just myself I like to make the block vertical I like to have this quarter inch seam right here on my left I'm a righty 
it just kind of makes sense in my brain. So I'm gonna zoom in here and really show you what I'm doing, but um, you can take any ruler. I, I find kind of a smaller, this is a six by 12 ruler. I think it makes it a little bit easier, but if you still just have this really long ruler, we could use that as well um, for this demo. See, that works just as well. For this demo, I am gonna just keep using this though. Um, okay, so I wanna make sure that this seam remains at the edge, at the corners. And I also wanna make sure I have a quarter inch seam allowance right here so that when I do so, this little goose beak <laughs> tip, uh, it stays pointy, you know? So it doesn't get eaten up by my seam like it could if that's not a full quarter inch. Okay, so here's the little trick with that. I'm gonna take here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rotate it this way and I'm gonna zoom in so you really see what we're doing. Oh, there we go. Okay, perfect. Alrighty. Um, okay, so here I go. I'm gonna make sure that the corner, see here, the corner of this, lines up with that seam. I am going to make sure, whoops, I'm gonna flip this actually, sorry. I'm gonna make sure that 10 and a half that little tick mark, this, see right here on my ruler, it's 10 and a half. Oh, can you see that? 10 and a half, right, right there. Uh, that also is lining up with the seam because that's gonna be my edge. Um, okay, so lining up, lining up. I'm gonna get my head in there and really make sure before I actually do it. And I also wanna make sure that, okay, so if you're a real, we you really want this to be pretty close to perfect, what's half of 10 and a half? Hmm, math people? It's five and a quarter. So you can find your five and a quarter mark right here, and you can line that up with that center peak of the triangle right there, or the goose beak, whatever we're calling it. I also wanna make sure I have at least a quarter inch right here before I trim, so I'm not, um, gonna take away my seam allowance oh no okay so cut cut and then I'm gonna rotate and I'm gonna line it up and cut it again let's see how I did okay cut and cut take that off did we do okay okay I think we did pretty good all right pretty good all right I'm gonna line it up again Five and a half, and now I, you know, this this second cut is much easier than the first cut because uh, you're not measure, you're not lining anything up too much because you already did all of your your wiggling and your um, your lining up, and now you're just you're lining up the cut edges, and uh, you just do your final two cuts. Let's see how we did. Do we do okay? I think that looks pretty sharp. I think that looks pretty good.